Uh, I'm going to take a minute to review what we had um, from last time. And we are going to build on it a little bit, and we're going to continue with um, looking at select statements. Um, but we're going to make the select statements maybe a little more um, complicated. Um, I, I think all the select statements we've done so far in this class has been, have been um, just single table selects. We haven't done anything where we join tables together. So we'll do, we'll do some examples where we join uh, tables together. Now, let me sketch out what I want to do today because I think it's good for us to sort of have um, an overview in mind so that we see how the pieces fit together um, as we start. Right now, we have something like this, which was really close to what I sketched out on the design back when we first started considering this database problem. I have a drop down with categories here. Based on what they pick, a list of polls appears on the screen that matches that category. We'll take a look at that. Um, reminder that the data source represents like a, a, a set of data that we're going to return from the database. So in this case, we actually have two data sources, right? Because list of categories, list of polls. Just descriptive, in descriptive terms, those are different things. So they're different data sources. So you can, my suggestion to you, the guideline of like how many data sources you have, like let's say you saw a screen, is identify and say, that is, hmm, that is, hmm, and so on down the line. And from that you can say, well, all right, this is a list of categories, this is a list of polls, okay, two data sources, because those are two different things, all right? There will be one connection string, however, that we're going to use everywhere within this app, because we're pointing to the same database. We're not, it's not as though we're pointing to a different set of tables to pull this, or I don't even mean set of tables, I mean different database to pull this as opposed to pulling this. It's coming from the same database. So we want to make sure we keep that consistent, so we're just going to have one connection string. So we create it the first time, and we are not going to create another connection string um, probably throughout all the examples we do with this database. All right? So, um, you know, because everything's coming from that one database. We want it consistent. That connection string is in the web config file and it, uh, the, the nice thing about that is, is if we were to ch change something about the database, we would only need to change it in one place because the connection string is in the web config file only once and everything that we're going to use that does database interactivity is going to point to that connection string. So if that changes, all we would need to do in theory would be to change a connection string and everything should go smooth. So even something as grand as changing from a access database to a SQL Server database shouldn't be any trouble. All right. Now again, there's always the little gotchas and all that, so you know it does bear to test, but shouldn't be an issue. You know, as long as we can change the connection string and point to the database in the right way. All right. So with this, we have in the web config file, we have our connection string. And our two data sources point to that connection string. We then have two visual controls that are bound to that data source. So many things, again, in, in modern software development, which, which sounds, as, you know, sounds like a, a bit of an oxymoron. You know, it's, there's no such thing as ancient software development. You know, the, the Greeks, you know, in Plato wrote some code or anything like that. But what I mean is, is you know, as we've gone to a more component-based, where instead of having some gigantic COBOL program that did everything from start to finish, you have little components that do pieces of the puzzle. Um, 
the notion of separating things into components and let each component do its little job is a big one throughout all the software. And this guy, for example, is responsible for the visual look of the data that we're going to pull. Whereas this guy is represent, uh, you know, represents the actual connecting to the database, the SQL statement that pulls it, and so on. So we separate the data from the presentation. We can, you know, you can, you can, you know, you, you can almost do a Mad Lib for those of you that are in 232. A Zeller's Mad Lib, you know, uh, separate blank from blank. In HTML, it's presentation from content. Um, uh, HTML from CSS. Um, in the Android development class, it is the strings from the object. You know, we can we do that in a million different places here. So this is another one. Here's what we want to do today, and we'll see how far we get today. I want to make so we have a link here, so that the name of the poll actually is a hyperlink. And when we click on that hyperlink, we're taken to a screen that has yeah. Well, no, I'm, gonna, I'm changing my mind a little bit. We're going to click on the word results. All right. And we go to the results page. It's going to show us the category of the poll, so technology, the actual poll question, Android, iOS, or other, and then the possible answers, um, as well as a number of votes. All right, that they have. Now again, we're going to have to add some tables, but we don't have to add the whole application, right? There's an art for being able to like do just enough to test what you have and, and not having to do the whole thing. So you might say, we don't have a user log on yet, so how can we vote? Well, I can go in the database and make up a dummy user, and I can stick in some votes, or I can make up five dummy users and stick in some votes. So I can fake through parts of this. And I don't have to develop everything before I test anything. I can develop a piece. The piece that I haven't yet developed, I can go in and, um, you know, th just through the back door of the database, go and put some dummy data in and test it out prior to that. Okay, so that's our aim here, and that's what we're going to do. And if I click on the next one that says results, going to go to another page and it's going to have that poll and so on. Let's do some thinking. All right. I see two data sets on this page. One is the poll itself, which, you know, includes its category. All right, that's one logical group of, of, of data. Keep in mind that it's going to be spread over a couple different tables, right? But just in logical terms, that's a unit of data. That my poll is Android, iOS, or other, and it's in a technology category. That's information about one poll, all right? And then I have the results, which consists of a combination of the and possible answers for that question and the actual answers. All right. Ultimately, we're going to get to this point. We're, we may not do it in one swoop, though. You know, I may first of all just create a link that's just going to show this piece of it. We'll get that going, and then I might create a piece that shows just the possible answers and doesn't show any kind of results. All right. Then I might go in and add the results. So this example might take all of today, or might even take all of today and part of Tuesday. All right? So we'll see how it goes. All right? So let's go and bring this up, and we'll have to make a couple tables and put some dummy data in them. 
and go from there. Studio. I'm going to open my website. A couple of you uh, had some issues relating to the solution file, and sometimes I get a couple of submissions. This is my folder. This is my solution file. Don't worry about the solution file, um, the bottom line here. Solution file helps you keep things grouped together as far as Visual Studio goes, but in this case, I have a single website. I just need the folder that has the stuff in it. So the folder that contains the web config and all your pages and all your files, that's the one I, I need. All right, I'm going to open up Polls app. I'm going to spend a second looking at what we did last time. Now this is, how do I want to say, this is... Uh, an indication of, a, of the, the strength of, of this framework, all right? I don't like, I don't like either when people are Microsoft zealots or when they're Microsoft bashers, right? They're like every other entity in the world. They do some things well and they do other things not so well. And if you think about it, think of what we've done, and we have written no C-sharp code yet for this particular application, right? We've done everything through their components, and that's a pretty good deal, right? I mean, we're able to get some very basic functionality without writing, writing any code for it. Now, we will write code at some point to do some things, because, hey, it's not going to do our whole job for us, but we can get some decent start on functionality without even writing any code. So that's indicative of my mind of a, uh, of a decent framework. And keep in mind, the functionality we're doing, now we would spruce up these pages, of course, you know, to make them look better. We'll create our master pages and our navigation and our site map if we were actually doing this site. Um, but the functionality we're doing isn't like fake functionality. It's functionality we would actually need on a website like this to be able to go and pick a category and see a list of polls. All right, that would be a very reasonable page in a real application. And we did it without any C-sharp coding. So, got to give them equal time. I did, get a, I did not get a letter from Bill Gates or anything, if that's what you're wondering. Like, <laughs> who, who, who saw my videos and, and like, why do you spend so much time making fun of Windows 8? All right. I'm just showing that I'm balanced, right down the middle. I call them like I see them, as they say. Anyhow. Here's our data sources, and it's a little misleading the way these are lined up, but this data source goes with the poll question, data source 2 goes with this. I strongly encourage you in, in the, the, what do I want to say, in the flow of the lecture, sometimes I don't go back and like rename things properly, but it's always a good idea to give them a good name. Um, a couple of you, for example, and again, I'm not picking on you because, you know, you're, you know, we're still learning all this, but a couple of you, for example, had your class for the previous example named class or class one or something like that. If you had a larger application with a million classes, it's going to be like, well, which one was the student class again? Class 497 or class 498? I can't quite remember. You just spent a lot of time just trying to sort through things like that. So give things meaningful names even if I sometimes slip up and forget to do it. So, like, maybe a better name would be SQL Data Source Polls, SQL Data Source Categories, or something like that. All right? 
Our SQL data source, again, this one is for poles. We define again the connection string. We define the SQL statement. Select star from poll where category equals question mark. What does a category represent? Uh, I'm sorry, what does a question mark represent? The user-selected input. User -selected input. This is data that we're going to fill in from somewhere. All right? And one form or another is going to be based on user selection. All right? The next screen, we get to say where that's going to come from. Because that could come from a bunch of different places. All right? Right now, it comes from the drop-down, which makes sense. We select the value from the drop-down. That's the category we want to see. So the value of the drop-down, the drop-down list selected value, we can't quite see what it's saying there, but it's saying selected value, gets put in that question mark, and the SQL statement gets executed. The other data source, same connection string. This does not have any parameters in it because we simply want a list of all categories. And that's it. We then bind our drop down to the category data source. We specify what's going to be the display field, what's going to be the value field. Remember, the display field is what makes sense to the user, because that's what they're going to see. The value field is what the script needs. And in this case, in our SQL statement, we need the actual primary key. We need the ID. We don't need um, the, um, the, the name of the category. We need the ID of the category. That's what we need to make this work. Uh, now with your uh, SQL data sources, I know you, mm -hmm. you're, in both cases you use the connection string. Mm -hmm. For the first one, could you have the selection be the, the, the database by name and the second one be connection string? Would that still essentially mean the same thing? No. Could you do it? Yeah, you could. It's a horrible idea to do it that way. Use the same connection string. You don't want to point, you don't want to refer to the database by ten different ways or two different ways. You want to refer to one database one way. So if something about that database changes, I just have to change it in one place. All right. That one place is the web configuration file where I have the parameters of my connection string defined. So if I were to move that database, or if I were going to change the name of it from polls to something else, I'd just change it here, and everything would work just like new. All right? Even so far as if I were changing the type of database it is. If I converted my database from an access database to a SQL Server database, I'd just change some parameters on this line, and I wouldn't have to touch anything else in the application. If you did it in the manner in which you suggested, you'd have to hunt down every place that you refer to the database in a different way and change it there. Is the, some of the, the finite point that being that the connection string being the relative path versus the database by name being a specific title? Because you're talking about if you swap in a different database, the connection string just kind of being the more... The connection string puts it in one place, and you can refer to it everywhere. So regardless of how you're referring to it, keep in mind with Access, we actually give a physical path. With SQL Server, we don't give a physical path. We supply a name of a server and a name of a database. All right. So whatever the parameters are to connect to whatever respective database you're using, we're going to put them in one place. and we're not going to, um, you know, we're, we're going to save that connection string and, and uh, always use it to refer to the one database. Is the uh, data directory um, parameter, is that, uh, is like that refers to the app underscore data folder? Yes. Is that, uh, is, where does that information get pulled from? Is that like an IIS web server? Where, where does the, the path? 
path of the day direct directory come from? That's a darn good question. I'm sure you could change it, but I don't know off the top of my head. Well, let's Google it. ASP.NET to find data directory. <laughs> Where is this documented? <laughs> it's a substitution string, so you can blah, 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 blah. So instead of blah, 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 we can do blah, 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 blah. Here's some documentation. You have heard of the TLDR tag, haven't you? Too long, didn't read. That's <laughs> <laughs> reading um, what is it, the disclaimer kind of thing that shows up in some of the programs the other day. Uh -huh. One of them had actually ended with that. Oh, really? And then it had like a summary. A summary, yeah. Like, yes. I honestly don't know where you define that. By default, it's app underscore data, but, and it looks like you can change it through code, but like where you could change the default, I have no idea. to. You know, hopefully when the day is done, you know, I'm, I'm batting more than 500. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't know that one. All right. So we're going to run this. And again, I did, uh, by the way, to finish up the thought here, I, I chose a data source for this. I even did some configuration of it by editing columns and by using the auto format to give it a certain look and all that. And this is our result. show us the results of the poll. All right? And we're going to build it in pieces. First we're going to show the the name of the poll and the category of the poll. All right? Then we're going to show the possible answers and then we're going to show the actual votes for who voted for what. So first things first. Now, let's think about this. Do I want a different page, a different web form for each poll? No, of course not. All right? What's wrong with that? Well, let's think if we added a new poll, I'm going to have to create a new web page for it. That sort of defeats the whole purpose of doing this in a database. All right? So we're going to want. If we don't want one page per poll, we're going to have then simply one page that's going to handle all the polls, right? There really isn't any other sort of in-between solution. So we're going to have one page that handles all the polls. How is it going to do that? How is it going to know which poll we want to display this time, right? Because ultimately we're going to have a list of polls and the word result next to each one of them. If we click results on one poll, we're going to see its results. If we click the exact same link on the other poll, we're going to go to the same page, but it's magically going to show the other poll's results. How does that second page know which poll to show the results for? How are we going to get that information to that second page? Would it be from the connection string? Not from the connection string. All right, the connection string tells it what database to connect to. And if you think about it, 
in, a, in an application, there's going to be tons of stuff that we're going to want to do a very similar thing to. So that doesn't really belong in the connection string because the connection string is sort of like for one thing for one database. This is going to be, there's going to be dozens of times we're going to need to do something very similar to this. The question is a question of state in databases, uh, in websites. And, and you might remember sometime in your life um, someone, maybe me, making the statement that HTTP is a stateless protocol. All right. What does that mean in plain language? What does it mean when I say a stateless protocol? Repeat that, please. Doesn't it just sit there, like, just waiting for the request? Yeah, that's true. And what about each request? Each request is a separate, standalone request. All right? So, in other words, the protocol itself doesn't give any mechanism to link requests together. All right. Therefore, there has to be another way to do it. We're going to have to build something into our application so that page two knows which poll we wanted to see the results of and which poll we selected on page one. Now, there's a number of ways that you can do that and a number of ways you can maintain state. And one of them is via the query string. All right. What's the query string? Question mark in the URL. It, it starts with the question mark in the URL. Absolutely. Then what comes after the question mark? Well, there's a list of things. There's going to be a parameter name, an equal sign, and then a value. Let me see if I can find. Let me, let me go into Angel, see if I can spot a query string in Angel. Yeah, that's true. We can try that if this one doesn't work. Ah, but it does. Okay, look at the URL. I click on 216. Section default.asp. Question mark something. I click on 232. Oh, looky there. Exact same page. Section slash default ASP. But there's something after it that gives more specific information. So, and let's, let's pop this in Notepad so that we can, um, so we can take a closer look and, and dissect this. And, and Sam's right. You, you do a Google search or other searches, the same thing. You get a question mark and you can see on the query string um, what, uh, what your search term was. So there's my URL. This is a web page. Interestingly enough, they use old school ASP and not .NET. Well, that's a throwback. All right. And if I went to another page, let's go back to 216. You'll notice it's the same URL. The difference is, is that ID has a different value. So that's how I passed, or this application passed, from page one to page two, saying, all right, I want to see everything about a course, and here is the course that I want to see about. ID, as you can imagine, is probably a primary key somewhere in some table, and what follows it is probably the value of the primary key for that particular course in their database. All right. So I have to give a little bit more information. I can't simply say I want to see a course page. I have to say I want to see a course page and oh yes, by the way, this is a course that I want to see. Now in database terms, it's almost always going to be the primary key I'm going to pass. All right. 